Jeremy Stevens and Yarir are finally going to figure this thing out. I mean, right? When did they, a month ago, three weeks, this just happened, a month ago? Just remind you guys what happened. They go out there to fight. It's in Mexico City. So essentially, Yarir is being, you know, hailed as the hometown guy. I believe he's moved and live, lives in Illinois now. But you get the point. Go, big deal. They're there to see him, and they're there to support him, and it's the main event, and he comes out, and they're seconds into the fight. I want to say nine seconds. This is off the top of my head. And Jeremy gets poked in the eye, gets a finger right in the eye, and he can't continue. He's seeing double. He's got to go to the hospital, his eye. And Yarir doesn't buy it. Yarir thinks he's either faking or should be tough enough to just deal with that, which is tremendously insulting. Not for nothing. He does not deny that he poked him. He admits he poked him. He's just contesting that Jeremy should have had a different reaction to that. Oh, and I should add, he didn't get disqualified. The referee did not. Dec he just wanted to fight. He wanted to put on a show. I mean, there's a part of it you have to respect. Was he on Sportsman? Like, yes. My final analysis, yes, he was. Was there a part of it that hey, he showed up to fight? He wanted to fight. He wanted to do a match. He promised the audience some entertainment and didn't give it to him. Felt he let him down, was mad about it, took it out on Jeremy. Yeah, there's another side to it. Yarir wants to fight. Well, it turns out Stevens wants to fight too. So they move the fight, give Jeremy just enough time. Hey, get your eye fixed. Both of you guys are on weight. Both of you guys are in shape. Push it out a little bit longer. We'll do this thing in Boston. Well, here we are. We're to Boston. So I, I don't know what to make of this fight. I don't make anything different of this fight now than I did the very first time. Other than Jeremy doesn't have to deal with the pain of ass of being in Mexico. And that is a pain in the ass because you're dealing with altitude and elevation issues that are very real. And he went out there and it's a big expense and he took his team and he spent six weeks. He did everything right and had about what I'm guessing to be nine seconds. So I do think there's an advantage. Even if we're splitting hairs here, I think there's a little bit of an advantage to Jeremy to doing it. My analysis before that fight is the same as it is now, though. I didn't see anything to make me believe different. Yarir is a weird fighter. That's true. He's a video game character. He's out there making moves up. And by the way, they all land. He will make a move up and stick it perfectly. No air balls. Jeremy's going to get in your face. He's going to push the pace. He's going to make it ugly. He's going to hit you in the body. He's going to come up with a hook and he's going to repeat. He also has, at least on paper, a meaningful wrestling edge, which we saw work if you go and see Frankie Edgar's success over your ear who is really the only guy to ever have any success over your ear, particularly when it came to just showing the importance of being able to get to a double and pin your opponent down and out scramble him when you need to. And we saw that. I never felt we saw a weakness in Rodriguez. I would not go that far. But we did see that perfect timing of certain positions, specifically a double leg that Jeremy also happens to have. He does have that weapon and that tool. So I think we've got a fun fight, but now we have an added element. It's not going to be five rounds anymore. It's going to be three. They're all pissed off and hot, and they want to get this vinegar out on each other. Great. Get it all. Get every one of those punches and kicks and knees and elbows and everything. But do it in 15 minutes. That's fun. Because they are going to empty the gas tank. They are going to put in all of that energy. They are going to throw just as many strikes at one another. They're just going to do it in a shorter period of time. And now they're both mad, by the way. And both of these guys are rough guys. And now we don't have to wait much longer. Uncle Chael, Uncle Chael, there's no bad guy like Uncle Chael. Never lost, not even around, undefeated, undisputed, oh yeah.